Peter Kinsey, Canadian Infloor Heating. We're here today with Rob Zwicker from Viesman Manufacturing. We're going to be installing some solar panels, a Viesman wall hung boiler, and tying it in with radiant floor and space heating for the air with an air handler. So maybe Rob, you can tell us a little bit about the solar panels that we're going to install here. Okay, the solar panels we're going to use is the, uh, the VitaSol 200F flat plate collector. What we've been looking at here is the, the slope of this roof and the fact that the metal roof, not too sure about anchoring down the panels, so we, we might be uh, considering putting it on the ground over here. So Yeah, that definitely would be a challenge. Yeah. yeah. The problem with the roof is that the separation of the roof is, is a little bit too high and then you've got to lag it down into the original roof and we don't know how far we've got to go down to get proper support. Right. So if you get a high wind and if it's just into that metal roof, Number one, it might void the warranty on the metal roof. Number two, the wind might just take the panel and away she goes. So right. with it over on the ground, we can anchor the flat roof type uh, roof mount system right to the ground. So, so Rob, you've, you've talked about mounting the panel outside here on the ground. Right. Is there any disadvantages to doing that? No, there's no disadvantage to it. In fact, it makes for sometimes for an easier install running your lines and, and uh, you can anchor the panels much better on the ground. Now when I anchor them to the ground, is there any a sauna tube or is there something special you, consideration? You can use sauna tube to anchor them in, that's probably the best bet. To, to, it's sort of solid anchor and you can pour a slab and uh, you can use steel girders. There's a number of different ways to do it, but you just want to have the panel anchor because you've got a panel that's on a 45 degree angle. The wind scoops around there, it can pick it up and if you get a high wind it can take it. So you want it anchored pretty good. And imagine we could be good in for some good winds in this area. Oh absolutely, yeah. open area. Now, you pointed out this trench, and right. you said there's the ideal chase for us to run our lines at. I'm used to running them from the roof and trying to figure a way through the structure or right. outside and try to cover them. Yeah. But you pointed out this trench, and I, and I guess it's ideal. Now the product that we're going to run through there, yeah. will it be the same thing, and, and what is that? It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's all in one product. It comes in an 80-foot coil, and you've got three-quarter or half-inch piping, depending on what you select with an Armaflex insulated jacket around it. Armaflex being the, the insulation. Insulation, Armaflex okay. is the insulation and you've got a sensor wire that's taped right inside the Armaflex. Right. So you've got your sensor wire, your tubing, supply and return, all insulated, ready to go, and ready to go underground. So I can lay that in this trench, yep. penetrate the structure, right, and then and then into my mechanical room and then we can backfill. Exactly. Okay, and then I make the connections on the solar panel here. Exactly. Okay. I saw one project, a commercial project, and they had put solar panels on the side of the wall on a 45, but they were awnings over right. the over the window. Right. Now is that is that common or it's we're seeing more and more creativeness going on with the selection where you're putting the solar panels. As long as you're getting full view of the sun, uh, it works. Uh, but uh, with the resurgence of solar coming back, there's all kinds of creative things happening with solar panels. I guess mounting the panels out here, I could put some landscaping around here. I could probably put the propane tanks behind it and then some landscaping and hide the propane tanks. Sure you could. Yeah. Well, that's great, yeah. that's great. So we're in the mechanical room now, Rob. Yeah. And we're gonna install a Wiesman Vito Dens. 100. 100. Yeah. And it's gonna be a propane unit. Propane version, yes. Yeah. So we can mount this on the wall. Yes. Now I challenge I see here is venting. What options do we have for venting the, the Vito Dens? Well, the Vito Dens, we have a couple of different options. In this particular case, uh, I would probably recommend the CP, CPVC venting, where you have an intake pipe coming in, three inch, right. and then you have an intake, an exhaust actually going out as well. So, so you've got two, two pipe individual system. pipes. Yeah, yeah, sealed combustion boiler. You can attain the same thing with a coax vent too, which the vent is inside, one is within the other. But the, due to the, the, the height up here in the ceiling, I think we might be better going with the two pipe system. Yeah, that's pretty tight to get so, a concentric. In and I yeah. don't think our clearance above grade outside is, is enough. enough. So yeah. okay, yeah. so two three-inch pipes, one being CPVC. Mm -hmm. um, the unit's going to be propane. Is there anything that I need to be aware of there? No, pretty similar to natural gas. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, my power supply is power supply is just one tenth power supply. One tenth yeah. power supply. Yeah. Uh, what about a drain? A drain, yeah, you should have a drain for the for the unit as well. Okay. Yeah, we, have sump, we, have we have a sump pit here, sump. so I can drain. You can drain into the I sump. I can drain yeah. into the sump yeah. pit. Yeah. Um, now I'm also going to have that dual coil. Um, the Vito Cell 100. Vito yeah. Cell 100 yeah. actually has two heat exchangers. Right, dual coil tank. You have okay. two coils inside the tank. One uh, that the boiler heats up, the other's for the solar. Okay. So when the solar can't maintain the water temperature, the boiler kicks in and brings up your domestic okay. temperature. So, yeah. so we're going to have that line set that we ran from our panels. Yeah. 
It'll come into this mechanical room. Now there's a, there's a pump station. Right. Uh, and the built-in control. Right. That goes between the solar panel and our tank. Yes. Can I mount that uh, on the tank or should it be mounted on the wall or is there any limits? I, I would mount it on the wall. Mount, I would it, mount on it on the wall. wall. Keep the tank separate from it on its own. Okay. And mount the, the very close to the tank or, you know, it's, it's fine. Yeah. I like that package, that the dual coil tank right. with that pump module because it makes things a lot simpler. Yes. Right? There's not yes. too many components and it's no. pretty Everything pretty fits, everything works. Okay. It was well designed. Yeah. So now I've, I've tied into the bottom heat exchanger. Now I'm going to tie into the top heat exchanger off the boiler we're going we're to mount on the wall here. Mm -hmm. um, any special considerations that, to be aware of there? Uh, no, just running the proper size uh, pipe. Uh, it's just, but it's all laid out in the instructions. We'll see okay. we'll, as we go along. Yeah. All right. So we've selected the Wiesman product for this site. Yep. Uh, with the solar, the indirect water heater, and the boiler. Mm -hmm. Good package. There are other systems on the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could explain why Wiesman. Well, Wiesman was one of the first to come out with a wall hung boiler. We've had it out for a number of years, and uh, we've we've made a lot of modifications to it, and and uh, we've got a really good product. Uh, titanium stainless steel heat exchanger, Order. fully condensing, fully modulating. It's a condensing boiler that, that, that does what it says it's going to do and the heat exchanger has got a lifetime warranty to the uh, residential customer. The quietness of the boiler just, uh, it's really outstanding. I can attest to that. Yeah. I was at a, a site this morning and I didn't even know the boiler was on. Yeah, you, you have to go right up to the boiler and put your ear to it to, to know that it's on. So it's, it's, it's quiet, it's economical, and it's long-lasting. Right. So. so lifetime warranty on the heat exchanger? Lifetime warranty on, on the heat On the boiler? Yes. On the indirect tank with the two heat exchangers, the warranty is? The indirect tank is eight years on the indirect tank, and you've got two years on all other parts and components on the boiler and tank. So we're outside here, Rob, and this is where we identified our penetration. And mm -hmm. we're going to be coming out almost at grade. Right. So I have to be at least 12 inches above the snow level. Exactly. So if I come up 16 inches up the wall, maybe 24 inches up the wall here, mm -hmm. can I come up uh, with that venting? Yes, you can. Snorkel it, it up. Is yep. there any special consideration? Do I have no, to just, insulate it? No, the, base, the biggest thing is the snow level. You want the snow level here, and, and of course you've got to have your clearances from the window. Well, the nice thing about this boiler, with its venting, I don't need a chimney. Right. I don't have to penetrate the roof. Right. I can just come out the wall. Right. The only problem I have here is when I come out through the wall, I'm going to be really low. Right. So can I snorkel up the wall? Can I yeah. come up 24 inches? Because I have to come above the snow line. Right. Right. Now, the other distance I have to have for clearances are windows. Windows, and, and doors. Look, a and window, open window, because this unit's 100,000 BTUs more. Plus, right. Or plus. Yeah. Uh, three feet from an open window. Correct. So we'll have that clearance from both of these windows. Right. We'll stay right. above the snow line. Yeah and it'll be two pipes. Yep. So one will be the fresh air for the boiler, or right. the combustion air for the boiler, exactly. and the other one is, is the exhaust. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be a nice clean install, yeah. it'll come up the wall, the shrubbery here is gonna hide the, hide the venting. Right. Um, and it looks pretty straightforward. Nice thing about a Peter too is the safety factor of the venting. The temperatures are not hot, so if you have children playing in the area, it's, there's no concern, but they, you know, you're coming out with an exhaust of about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. So you can hold your hand under it. It's not even as hot as a kettle. So, Any yeah. consideration with the vegetation? Here? Vegetation, as long as you keep it back trimmed a bit a little bit. Some vegetation is more sensitive than others, but most times it's, it's okay. It's fine. Okay. Um, is there any condensate that falls out? You're going to get a little bit of condensate. In some places, I've, I've even seen a little bit of, of, of ice build up at the bottom, okay. but nothing major. And that's, that's standard? That's, that's, to, that's, to that's be standard. That's to be expected. expected. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that's, it's pretty straightforward. I'm out the wall, I snorkel up. Right. And uh, Bush and air in, exhaust out. Keep my clearances from the windows. You're good to go. Above the snow line. And I guess I have to stay away a certain distance from any mechanical intakes for fresh air for the house. Right. Okay. Well, that's okay. pretty straightforward. Good. Great. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Rob.